Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, one word, all caps, will get you 10% off orders of $10 or more at Flipside Gaming, Original Magic Art, and orders of singles at Multizone. If they don't have what you're looking for, you could check out TCG Player and use my affiliate link to help support the channel. Looking for a way to bling out your deck and not spend a fortune? Alter Sleeves can help with that, and you can help with the channel at the same time by using my affiliate link. Or, if you're looking to join the Goblin Gang, you can always support me through Patreon. Hey gang, Flipside Gaming has another giveaway, this time for Commander Legends. Between November 2nd, 2020 and November 20th, 2020, any order of $10 or more will get you entered to win a box of Commander Legends. Alternatively, you can send a stamped, self-addressed envelope or postcard to Flipside Gaming at the following address. It's one entry per person, so good luck and have fun. Hey gang, today's game is another Jersey Boy special with Frank playing Kenrith. He keeps an overgrown tomb, a temple garden, assassin's trophy, incubation druid, wishclaw talisman, scheming symmetry, and vampiric tutor. Mike is playing his Olivia deck, keeping a spine rock knoll, two mountains, Lord of the Void, Felden, and a soul ring. Matt is playing his fan favorite Sizen deck, keeping two swamps, soul ring, jet medallion, Myojin, wound reflection, and Liliana's caress. And last but not least, Trevor is bringing out Xenagos, keeping Temple of Abandon, Malignus, Soul Ring, Spine Rock Knoll, Sneak Attack, Stomping Grounds, and a Hellkite Tyrant. Matt wins the die roll and starts us off. Matt plays his Swamp, and he casts Soul Ring. He taps the Soul Ring to cast Jet Medallion, passing. Trevor takes two from an untapped Stomping Ground, and he casts his own Soul Ring. Frank plays an overgrown tomb, and takes two to have it come in untapped, but passes. Mike draws, and plays a spine rock knoll, hiding away one of his top four cards. I think he didn't want Frank to feel left out, so that's probably why he didn't drop his turn one soul ring. Matt draws, and plays a swamp. He's able to cast a turn two Sizen, which people are pretty okay with. Trevor draws his two from Sizen, losing two life, and then draws for turn. He plays a forest, and taps out entirely for sneak attack. At the end of turn, Frank casts Vampiric Tutor, losing two life to go and find a card and put it on top. Frank draws his extra cards, and loses two from Sizen. He plays a command tower for turn, and then casts Incubation Druid before passing a Mike. Mike draws his cards, and loses his life. He plays a mountain, and then drops his soul ring, making Frank real sad. Mike then taps the ring for a spawning pit, and passes. Matt draws his cards, and loses two, playing a ghost quarter for turn. He then casts a mirage mirror in his main phase, and passes to Trevor. Trevor draws his extra cards, and loses two to Sizen. He plays a temple of abandon, which comes in tapped, and scries one. Once he's done, he activates Sneak Attack to put out a Hellkite Tyrant. Moving to combat, Mike and Matt make arguments for why Trevor should attack the other, but Trevor decides to hit Mike. With it connecting, the Hellkite Tyrant steals the Pit and Soul Ring. Trevor then sacrifices the Tyrant in his post-combat main phase to the Spawning Pit and puts a counter onto it. He then moves to his end step, discarding a Forest. Frank loses his two, and draws his cards. He plays an Exotic Orchard, which currently taps for Jun colors right now, and then plays a Biomancer's Familiar. He passes, discarding down to seven. Mike draws, and loses his two. He plays a Homeward Path, which sadly only works for creatures. He casts a Sark and Fireblood, upticking the Walker to discard a card, and then draw one, and he passes turn. Matt does the thing, losing two, and plays an Urborg for his land drop. He casts an expedition map, and I'll give you one guess as to what he's going to go and find with it. We then see an ivory tower, followed by Liliana's caress, and he passes to Trevor. Trevor draws his cards, and loses two. He puts out Malignus with sneak attack, and then he casts Traverse the Outlands. Frank responds, casting Assassin's Trophy, and targets Malignus. Trevor lets this happen, and once he gains priority, 
uses the sneak attack to pop out a Molgraf monstrosity. The Malignus is then destroyed, and he goes to search for a basic from the trophy trigger, and he also gets to get 8 more basics from the Traverse seeing the Molgraf's power. He actually can't find 9 basics, which is what he can get, and he only grabs 8. Trevor then plays a Wasteland for turn, and uses Sneak Attack to put out Rurik Thar. Moving to combat, the Moldgraf heads at Frank, while Rurik Thar takes out Sarkin on Mike's side. Moving to his end step, he has to sacrifice the Sneak Attack creatures. This has the Moldgraf's On Death trigger popping off, and he rolls to see which two of his three creatures return. Sadly, Rurik Thar must remain in the graveyard, and Malignus and the Hillkite Tyrant return to the field. Frank draws his two and loses two, and he plays a Fabled Passage, sacrificing it to go and find a basic to put into play. It's an island, and he then pays one black for a scheming symmetry. He picks Matt as his opponent, and with a spell on the stack, Matt sacrifices the map to go and find his Cabal Coffers for hand, and then tutor for a card on top of his library at the same time. Once they're finished tutoring, Frank then adapts the Incubation Druid, putting three plus one plus one counters onto it, and taps it for three black. He uses that black mana to cast a Tainted Remedy, passing to Mike. Mike draws his two extra cards and loses two life. He plays a Mountain, and then taps three mana for a Felden before passing turn. At the end of turn, Mike has to discard down to seven, and while he's deciding, Trevor uses Wastelands to blow up Urborg. Mike then pitches a card, taking two from Liliana's Caress. Matt should gain four from his Ivory Tower in his upkeep, but it's replaced by Frank's Tainer Remedy, having him lose four instead. He then draws two and loses two from Sizen. He plays a Swamp for turn, and has the Mirage Mirror become a copy of the Hellkite Tyrant. Matt then pays four life instead of mana to cast Snuff Out because he controls a Swamp, and he destroys the original Hellkite Tyrant. Matt then swings a Hellkite Tyrant at Trevor, and once it connects, steals all of Trevor's artifacts, even the ones that he stole from Mike. With nothing else, Matt then passes. Trevor untaps his huge mana base and draws his two extra, losing two. He plays a Hyavamaya Hollows and entwines a tooth and nail. In a refreshing change, he finds Inferno Titan and Stalking Vengeance, putting them to hand, and then puts from hand to field the Stalking Vengeance and Whisperwood Elemental. He then pays one red to sneak out the Inferno Titan, and with it entering, Trevor resolves to enter the battlefield trigger by having to deal two of the damage to Frank's familiar, and one to Frank himself. He then activates sneak attack again for the Hydra Omnivore, and goes to combat. The Hydra and the Vengeance go at Frank, and the Inferno Titan goes at Mike. With the Inferno Titan attacking, he deals three to Felden, and Malignus goes at Matt. Matt blocks Malignus with Sizen, while Frank takes 13, and Mike takes 6. Matt and Mike then take a further 8 from the Omnivore hitting Frank, and Trevor then moves to his end step. He sacrifices the Titan and the Hydra, which triggers the Stalking Vengeance twice. He uses the trigger from the Hydra to take out Frank permanently, and then deals 6 to Matt with the Inferno Titan one. Trevor also gets to manifest his top card because of the Whisperwood Elemental, and he passes to Mike. Mike draws a card for turn, and plays a Mountain. He taps 3 mana for Nahiri's Wrath, discarding 11 CMC worth of cards to deal 11 damage to up to 2 creatures. He picks the Vengeance, and the Whisperwood Elemental, losing 4 from Liliana's Caress for discarding the cards. Responding to the spell, Trevor sacrifices the Elemental to give all of his creatures, when this creature dies, manifest the top card of your library. He gets a Stalking Vengeance trigger, and he deals 4 to Matt from it. The Vengeance itself then dies, but doesn't get a trigger from itself as its only other creatures, and Trevor gets to manifest his top card. Mike then passes, and at the end of turn, Matt uses Ghost Quarter on Trevor's Yavamaya Hollows. Trevor taps it, manifesting face up his Sakura Tribe Elder, and then goes to find a basic from the Ghost Quarter trigger. Matt gains 3 life from the Ivory Tower trigger, and draws for turn. He plays a Swamp, and has enough to cast Myogen of Night's Reach. It comes in with the counter, as Matt had cast it from his hand. Matt then removes the counter from Myogen, which will have his opponents all discard their hands. 
Trevor responds once he gains priority, using one of his mana to sneak out a siege behemoth. His opponents then discard their hands, with Trevor taking 10, and Mike taking enough to get taken out. Matt then passes as the behemoth dies at the end of turn. Trevor draws and casts a greater good, which is a lucky top deck. He brings out Xenagos and moves to combat. He puts the Xenagos pump onto Malignus and swings it at Matt. Matt chumps with the Myogen, and in Trevor's post-combat main phase, we see Trevor sacrifice Malignus to draw a nice chunk of cards, and then discard three. He does take six from this, and he then activates the Seek attack, putting out an Uvenwald Hydra. This lets him go and search for a land from his library, and surprise surprise, Reliquary Tower hits the field. Trevor then passes. Matt gains two life on his upkeep from the Ivory Towers, and in his main phase, plays out a Cabal Coffers. At this point they realize Matt should be one soul ring down since Mike is dead, and Matt then casts a Wound Reflection in his main phase. He then taps some more mana for a Temple Extortion, and Trevor has to let Matt have an extra turn, otherwise he'd die from taking half from the Extortion, and then the rest of it from the Wound Reflection at the end of turn. With nothing else, Matt passes to himself. Matt draws for turn, and plays a Swamp. He activates the Coffers to help cast Damnation, which wipes Trevor's board. We then see Sizen return for 6, and Matt activates the Mirage Mirror to have it become a copy of Xenagos. He moves to combat, pumping Sizen, and goes at Trevor. Trevor responds before moving to blocks, cheating on a Sunder Shaman, who enters and blocks. Matt then passes, and at the end of turn, Trevor sneaks out Scourge of the Throne and a Stonehoof Chieftain, all but closing out the game for himself. Trevor draws his extra cards for turn, and loses two, and then draws a card for turn. He activates Sneak Attack to put out Ilharg, and then the Blightsteel Colossus, just in case, and swings everything at Matt. Matt knows he's done for, and gives Trevor the game. Game review time. Unfortunately, Mike's Olivia deck seemed to be lacking in black, and despite the fact that he did have access to it for a very short window because of Urborg, he wasn't able to do very much. His deck tends to perform much better in the long and medium games, and I think between Sizen and Xenagos putting pressure out from very early on, he just wasn't able to keep up. I think Frank played relatively well, and the only mistake he made was messing with Trevor's ramp, which is something you just don't do if you want to live. Trevor's start was absolutely bonkers, and I think the fact that Sizen came out so early only helped him by giving him crazy fuel to be able to put out with Sneak Attack. I don't think it was a misplay on Matt's part though, since his deck really wants to get his commander out and also help refill his hands while at the same time punishing his opponents. He really had no way of knowing that Trevor had Sneak Attack in his hand. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.